right, thank you. Um, yeah, but uh, what's what was it like uh, being a free agent and uh, signing with the Falcons here? Oh well, I'm gonna be real. Being a free agent was not good because I didn't want to get released. <laughs> but uh, you know, man, things happen. Um, you know, injuries occurred. Um, uh, it was a, it's a it was a step behind me now. So you know, overcame that, man. Went through a little tough time. Went through a little tough right with injuries, man. And uh, you know, one led after another. Uh, had to overcome that and you know, just get on my best ability with my body. But uh, you no know, Falcons the opportunity with the Falcons presented itself and it you know it come, came at a better time you know um, this point in my career you know um, being being close to home um, working here with the opportunity to work with a program that's developing and, and trying to go out and win. And uh, what what are um, how did they say you would fit in the defense? Uh, fit in the defense you know just how I normally is uh, edge rusher run stopper on the end um, being able to come in there. Right away with some experience, uh, a veteran mentality, you know, toughness, and uh, you know, just do my best I can do to to make as many plays as I can. Does it help that you know you know AJ Terrell and some of the other guys that uh, saw you at their their camp uh, last yeah. summer there? Yeah, man, those boys, you know, from from everyone in Georgia, kind of like knows about each other, knows about um, how we were raised and everything of that nature. Um, try to me personally, I try to uh, touch as many players as I can. So if they got a camp, I'm gonna try to pull up. If they got any events of that nature, I want to be able to come along because you know it just makes it that much better as a, as a you know as a, for the community for football, not just for the Falcons, but for the NFL in general. Right now, you mentioned uh, the injuries. How are you health-wise right now? Oh, I'm I'm 100 perfect. Uh, excited to go training every day, no restrictions. Um, ready to ready to put a full health season together. When, when did you feel like you were at actually at that point? Uh, what? What, what point are you saying? Where, that, where you're like, okay, I'm never sure you're good. good. Yeah. So, um, like the like the end of the season last year, I, I tore my pick, and that was a bummer because I just had got done uh, with a hip flexor injury that I was dealing with on both sides, and you know, just <clears throat> having a time to sit back and and rewind, and you know, try to connect the dots from backwards, and knowing what I didn't do, knowing the things that I did too much of knowing what I can do to prevent it you know, from these from this point on. And uh, it just makes you really tap into your inner self, tap into your training more, you know, tap into, you know, just your, your personal lifestyle, which, which you, what you have to do or more. So, you know, man, I, I had time to reflect, got that all situated, knowing how to attack it, and, and I'm, I'm excited to, to go back to, man, just playing football for a full 17 weeks straight. So what did you change? Or did you change? Yeah, change, you know, just – Change, change, I, first of all, I, I, I train too much if I if I can. I go out there and try to do two, three times a day. Yeah, in the past, but man, you you can't do that all the time when you super when you explosive athlete like like myself. So you know that's you thinking you're working hard, which you are working hard, but you're kind of working backwards because your body has needs time to rest and needs time to relax. And you know everybody's body is different. Once you get to a certain point, you got to start doing different things. So I had to accept the fact of that. Go out and uh, I feel better than I I feel better than I've ever felt. When was the last time you felt this healthy? When was the last full season where you felt like you were at 100? percent I would say 2019. Um, that's the that's the full season that I played. Well, uh, 2020. That's the full season. I, well, I tore my ACL that year, but still, you no. Know, just leading up into that, leading up into that, man, it was a it was a great opportunity. I felt the same way now, being able to being able to do the things I was doing. You know, like you said, ACL injury is a tremendous, uh, is is tremendous, and it it it, it affects you mentally, right. you know, spiritually, everything, man. You have to question yourself about a lot of things. So, you know, over that hump, ready to move forward. Hey, Bud, you, you're part of, you know, this team's obviously invested in a number of uh, really accomplished guys on the defensive side of the ball, including you. What what have you thought of, you know, the moves this team's made, bringing in some veterans on on defense? I think it's I think it's great for the I think it's great for the culture. I think it's great for the you know for the staff and for this team and for this city. Uh, you know, a lot of great guys coming in, man, and it only going to make it better. It's a lot of competition going to go involved, and man, you know, guys like Calais, um, I mean, you know, he's one of those older older guys who's really the vet, you know, in the room. So you know, year thirteen, I think. So uh, man, it's exciting to even learn from that type of person, even with me at year nine. And uh, wanted to go. You know, I know it'll help Grady out tremendously to be able to have that type of impact in the middle. And no telling about the other guys, man. They are coming along. Everyone's excited to be a part of what it is. I can just sense, you know, in the locker room at the workouts, 
that all these guys, man, are, are eager and they know it's an opportunity for us to go out here and, uh, and, make, a, and make a big splash. How does that uh, affect the, um, <clears throat> the vibe for this offseason training when there's so many new faces? Yeah. I mean, personally, with me, I feel like I know pretty much a lot of the guys just from uh, if I played with them, I probably played with them at Tennessee or seen them at Pittsburgh. Like a couple of guys that came from Tennessee, and I and I and I so I really familiar with them. A couple of guys I trained with in the area, um, in in Atlanta area with them. So you know, like uh, it just makes it that more comfortable for me when I walk in. A lot of the younger guys already told me they were studying my film and they watched me when they were younger when when they were coming out of uh, college. So you no, know, that just gives you that sense of man, everyone kind of already is in in intertwined with each other, or you can say that so. And it's it's always good to have that comfort when you walk into a space and it's a new area. You know, you know, guys are accepting everyone is you know, we got one goal and that goal is to win. So no matter see it don't matter how you got here, it's about the goal that we get that we have when we get here. So no and that's the win. Just curious how it makes you feel when the younger guys come up to you and they say that they watched you growing up. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> not weird. Yeah, it's feel weird. So you know uh <laughs> Man, yeah, it is what it is at this point. But, uh, man, you know, it's a blessing at the end of the day because a lot of guys don't get to make it this far in the league, no matter if you're a first-round pick. I was a first-round pick. That, that still doesn't matter make that I was going to make it this far. And, uh, you know, uh, being a Georgia kid, man, playing for the Falcons, uh, having younger guys look up to you, man, that's all we that's all we dream about. That's all we really want to do. It. So now the proof in the pudding for me is to go out here and lead these guys and, you know, uh, show them that you know, just because you get you know, kind of established in the league, you have to go out and work harder and harder to keep your name relevant. And uh, I got chips on my shoulder because I was hurt these last couple of years, so I'm gonna play as hard as I can and play the most violent as I can just to be able to you know, get back into that mix for myself personally, but also for the team to keep this team alive and uh, you know, just do the what I what the coaches want me to do. How much do you enjoy just being a veteran player on the team? Yeah, it's, it's, it's dope. It's real dope. Um, the, the coaches understand that here. Um, they do a great job with that. The players understand that also as well. And man, now you just got to go out and lead. If you're a veteran, you got to be able to lead. You know, I do a great job at that. Not only um, not only by example, but also, you know, uh, physically as well and verbally sometimes. So, you know, uh, <laughs> that's that's a great thing. Going kind of off of what you're talking about with the injuries and, and getting back to a healthy level, how and, and how things change as you get older, how do you feel like you're the same guy you were maybe in 2018, 2017, mm -hmm. 2019, to where you are today, and how do you think you're different? Yeah, so different-wise, I would say, you know, you, when you're younger, you just play off pure athleticism. Who's ever, when you come out of the draft, you, if you're super athletic, you're going to make plays because people haven't got a chance to study you, you know, uh, they haven't really seen your skill set, so it's it's kind of different. You know, you're fresh off. You know, you can be fast, running four or fives, and changing direction, and bending and, and fluid. But eventually, you know, you're gonna run into guys who've been in the league for ten plus years, and they're not gonna be as fast as you, but they're gonna be smarter than you. So that's gonna be they're gonna stop you. And uh, the older you get, the more the smarter you get with the game. It just comes from reps, and it comes from the experiences. You know, having in-game experience, in training camp experience. Knowing what's going to really, when to turn it up, what day in training camp is going to be good, when to not go so hard so you can reserve your body. And uh, when you're in between those lines, man, knowing how to give it your all but still being smart. And, man, that's a big part of getting older. But it just comes with, you know, just identifying identifying things. And that's what you really got to tune into. You can't ignore things. You got you got to just take it. To, you, you just got to take it. And uh, when it comes at you, you got to make sure that you're ready to adjust and adapt to a lot of things that will be thrown at you because the NFL is is is, is it's a lot of things happen sporadically. So you got to be able to, you know, like I said, adjust to it. Does it feel like nine years in? Nah, man, it feel like three or four. <laughs> For real, it feel like real quick. I just feel I remember I got drafted the other day um, in Chicago, and man, it was it was a blessing. Then man, a lot of people came in, uh, were excited with me going to the Steelers, but. I would say one thing, when I signed to the Falcons, I've never, my, my phone and they never blew up that much. Even on draft day, you know, it was a lot of excitement, you know, from Steeler Nation. But to feel the at-home love, I guess people at home were like, man, he went to the Steelers. Ah. But now that I signed to the Falcons, it's, it's crazy, like, uh, the support, the, 
the people who want to see the Falcons do good from just from my circle, as well as you know people who I who I've been seeing on a daily since I because I, I live in the off season. So who, people who I normally see on all in the off season now they talk to me and and uh, want to say they coming to a Falcon game where they knew I was on the Steelers and knew I was on the Titans the whole time and <laughs> and didn't say nothing at all. So you know it, it's just it's just funny how that works, man. And, uh, you know just making new Falcon fans and. Uh, you no, know, that's that's exciting. I seen uh, a funny story is uh, you know some some people who I know they die hard Steelers fans and always hated the Falcons. As soon as I signed it, I seen them throwing their jerseys away from the Steelers and they wanted to tell them they're gonna buy Falcons jerseys. So you know that's always a plus that I made some people from renege from their from their fandom. <laughs> so that's funny, man, for sure. Uh, before I was Mike Davis on here a couple years ago, he uh -huh. said like. Like, is that already happening for you? Yeah, the ticket request going crazy. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, they might have a student section like in high school with Bud jerseys on, but uh, man, I'm gonna have to get with the, the, the ticketing people and, and let them control that because I ain't trying to be dealing with nobody. Hit me up before the game for the tickets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and set the, I'm gonna go in and set the record straight for that one, and uh, I'm gonna let everybody go to one person. And you want to buy a ticket? You come here. Don't call me direct. And uh, no, it'll be exciting though to see all the love and the, and the people in the stands though. So. You keep talking about how much love you're receiving <clears throat> when you tell your family that this is happening and that you're getting ready to be close to home. What was that reaction? Yeah, well, uh, at first my kids, when I told my kids we were gonna go to another uh, team, they was mad because they really liked the Nashville. They had got accustomed to Nashville because they got older in Nashville, and uh, so that, I was like, that, uh, so I had to tell them like what team we were going to. I told them I was going to the Falcons. Back. We're going back to Georgia. So then, you know, they decided just to come to Georgia. They only I don't think they, they I don't even think they understand like that I'm still going to the Falcons. But it's exciting though. For for my for my older family though, you know, everyone's excited that I came back home man, and have an opportunity to just see me up close personally each every home game they want to. They don't have to plan it, they just can leave the house, come to the game and go back home. So that's always a plus for them. You know, and that's to be fun. Sometimes you gotta Sometimes we, uh, as players, we forget the experiences that our family and our loved ones get to get to have during this process. You know, we're so tied into the business of it, so tied into trying to be great and win games that we overlook, you know, the small things which count. You know, uh, your family, man, they going to have memories for the for the lifetime. They came to the game and got the South Kyle Pitt score a touchdown. They get to see – they they get to see uh, Grady get a sack. You know they get, they get to see him up close in person. Oh, he's number ninety seven. I I've been watching him the whole time. Or AJ Terrell get a pick. Everybody doing the dirty bird. Like it's it's different. You know you you hear about it. We we thought about it when we was young. We seen guys like Vic them doing the dirty bird and having a great time. But to actually be in the mix of it and being the culture man, it's a plus. Like I said, man, the Falcons were my were my heroes growing up. Like Vic was our neighborhood hero growing up. And um, to be a part of this journey is, is amazing. Chance to come up here for a game? Nah, so my first NFL game was the game I played, which is crazy. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. We didn't ask you about Ryan Nielsen. Um, oh, yeah. Thought on your new defensive coordinator and, and kind of what you think about yeah. what he's going to bring. I think Ryan is intense, really. And uh, and I'll just say this, and not just because I'm on the Falcons, but as far as when it comes to pass rush, uh, I ain't really never experienced a, you know, teaching in a short time already from a coach of, of that stature. So <clears throat> he's not just putting X's and O's and telling you what to do. He's actually breaking down the pass rush. And no matter what level of, of time you've been in the league, man, you still got room for knowledge. And uh, he's actually, like, really breaking it down. And it's exciting to me. I'm ready to work with him. I'm ready to get active. So it's fun. Uh, what was it like uh, when you got the news that uh, you were going to be getting traded to the Falcons? Uh, I would say um, a little bittersweet from the standpoint of the relationships that you form uh, playing for a team for three years. Um, but I was definitely excited about the opportunity to have a fresh start here in Atlanta and uh, kind of new opportunity, opportunity to wipe the slate clean. And uh, what was that conversation like with Brad? A lot of people talk about how him and Terry – we're able to work it out, and uh, did you have a conversation with him about um, you know coming here and getting a fresh start? Yeah, it was pretty brief. Just um, we feel like you know this is going to be the best things for both sides. Um, ultimately, I agree with him, and then we just kept it moving from there. And uh, what have they told you about the opportunities here with the Atlanta Falcons? 
uh, you know, they're pretty excited about my ability, um, what I'm able to do in man-to-man press coverage, and how how it'll uh, you know complement the scheme. You know, uh, you know, I, I approach the situation, put my best foot forward, and uh, sometimes you know, things don't work out how you intend to. So you take those lessons and move on, and uh, take those lessons and apply them to a new situation, which is here. And uh, I'm excited for this new chapter. What's the lesson maybe that you took the most from those three years and kind of everything you went through there? Um, you know, being in my time at Ohio State, found a lot of success. Um, didn't really see a lot of lows. So to see those lows and learn the resilience that can come from that, going through a person through adversity, it kind of lets you kind of know what man you're, what kind of man you are. Jeff, did you get to know um, AJ Terrell at all, like in the pre-draft process of the combine, things like that? Yeah, I've been familiar with AJ since high school. Um, obviously, hearing about coming up with other recruits in the area, and then we played them in Clemson. They stole one from us, obviously. Um, but nah, we, we trained together last year during the offseason. We had the same DB trainer. Okay. So it was really cool, you know, um, getting to a secondary with people that I'm already somewhat familiar with. Oliver Davis? Oliver Davis, yes, cool. sir. Cool. Uh, what, what's that relationship like, and what's it going to be like, uh, you know, teaming up with them? I mean, like I said, it's pretty cool just coming into a situation where even though it's new, you're not completely the new guy because we've had, we've had conversation, dialogue in the past. Um, I'm extremely excited to play with someone of his caliber, and um, I think we're make a lot of plays together. It's interesting, I feel like, because sometimes with corners, it's you don't get to like play beside each other. You're on opposite ends. But with you and AJ, the fact that y'all have this relationship that y'all built already, how do you think that that could translate on the field to be like, hey, I know he's got it, or hey, I know he's. Does that make sense? Like, how do you think that relationship can can translate for you guys? Uh, the best way I can compare it to um, my last year at Ohio State, um, me and the opposite corner, Damon Arnett, had a really close relationship um, from my time at Ohio State. And just having that trust and that chemistry with the opposite corner, uh, I think it pays tremendous dividends uh, over the course of a game. Because when you trust that the other guy on the other side is handling his job, I think you play with a different level of confidence. Do you feel like you and AJ kind of already have that maybe foundation established? I think we're laying down the groundwork. Between the groin and the rookie year and then the Achilles after that, like, did, do you feel like it never really, in some ways, in Detroit got, got felt like maybe with last year, did it feel like almost a rookie year for you in some ways because of all that? Or like, how did you approach that considering what happened? Yeah, that's interesting you say that. I, I say last year, even though it was my third year in the NFL, um, in a lot of ways it felt like my rookie year because that was the most football that I played um, probably in two years. You know, my first year I probably played seven to ten games, second year played one game. So in a lot of ways, just playing that much football, there was a lot of new things. Um, when you're away from the game for a while, kind of takes some time to get back into it. But I was able to sit down this off season and take all those lessons I learned, um, apply them now, and I'm hoping to see a huge growth. Um, what's it been like? Uh, uh, I don't know how much the coaches can do, but I guess you've met Steve and uh, – uh, Coach Gray, what what um, what's it been like uh, working with those with with them uh, thus far? The best way I can describe it is enlightening. Mm -hmm. Just learning from someone like Coach Gray. Um, been meeting with him a lot, learning the game, um, giving him me a lot of pointers so far. And I've only been here for two weeks, mm -hmm. so um, I'm, I'm going to do my part in doing learning the most I can from him. Uh, someone that's been coaching for as long as he's been coaching, I think he has a lot of game to give out. We're a long way from, from Sundays and games being played, but when you look around, you know, the guys you'll be lining up with, guys like AJ and Grady who've been here, the team's made a big investment on the defensive side of the ball and veterans like yourself. How good can this defense be? I think the sky's the limit, but at the end of the day, um, things can look good on paper, but it doesn't really matter until you go out there on the field and you prove it. Jeff, in the little amount of time that you've spent through it so far, how would you describe the vibe around everything? It's been really exciting. Um, I think when you're presented with a new opportunity, you can't take it for granted. Um, you try your best to put your best foot forward. And I think when you approach it with that mindset, um, there's no telling what you can do. Do you come here feeling like you want to prove something or feeling like you're not even thinking about what happened in Detroit, what happened in the past, and you're wiping that slate clean? 
honestly, as long as I've been playing the game, I've always had the mentality of proving myself. Um, no matter when I was coming out of high school as a five star, um, coming out of the draft, uh, I think if you keep that mentality, uh, you never get complacent. Jeff, I wanted to ask you about coming back from the Achilles injury specifically, because it's just one of those injuries that different players can react differently to. Um, did you feel like you were at 100% going into the start of last season, or was it a bit of a progression in terms of kind of still figuring out kind of where you were physically and progressing throughout the year? And, and you know, following up from that, like, is there more potentially that you feel like you can grow into physically a year on from returning to the field? I, I think in the moment, I feel like I was 100% as I'm playing, um, obviously staying healthy majority of the season. But then in hindsight, uh, when I sat down, you know, with my trainers, um, my PT people, uh, it was really cool to know that there was another level I could tap into. So I think the room for growth is still there and um, haven't reached my athletic peak just yet.